Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. Now before we get started, we're going to do a little bit of plugging because there's some new stuff that I wanted to uh, draw to your guys' attention. Uh, but before I get into that, I wanted to apologize for the um, lack of videos on YouTube. Last week we were working on... What were we doing? Oh, uh, the Ninja Turtle piece, which is going to kind of just very briefly tie into the plugging in the beginning here. Uh, and what I had intended to do was we were playing music. We were having a good time last week. Uh, unfortunately, the, the file format, for whatever reason, uh, that Picardo records, and at least what I have it at, I haven't been able to figure a way to change it, uh, I wasn't able to compress it with actual recording that I was doing. So for some reason, uh, it got messed up because I wanted to compress the video, and it, and it wouldn't really work. So... I apologize for that. Uh, this one will go up pretty much immediately. If not today, it'll go up tomorrow. Maybe, maybe I'll just probably do it the weekend, and we'll have another video throughout the week just hopefully to make up for it. Uh, more of just maybe this sort of thing. We'll just kind of go through this. Now, let's do the plugging. Let's get all that fun stuff out of the way. And uh, thank you, everybody that's uh, here tonight. I really appreciate it. And everybody that's been sharing, um, spreading the word, asking their friends, their buddies to join in, and just all that good stuff. And uh, there's been a few of you that have actually been private messaging me over, I'd say, a week, maybe like seven to ten days or so. Uh, and I'm glad to be able to chat with some of you guys, and thank you for uh, asking me questions. <laughs> and uh, if I'm able to give you an answer at all, I, I want to say thanks for that. That's uh, it's really cool. That's really cool. So what we're going to be doing today, and then we'll get to the plugs. Just want to, you know, get it going. What we're doing today is Kickstarter the Kickstarter for the comic book that I worked on called The Standard uh, with uh, art help by Will Robson. I believe it's the last issue for sure and a little bit of the issue five. Uh, we had a Kickstarter going to try to get a deluxe special edition uh, Alpha Omega end all you know sexy time uh, gr uh, graphic novel collected version of the book and we we blew past the asking price I believe within the first 24 hours which was amazing and at the end of the month there which was uh, I want to say two days ago maybe maybe three or four uh, we had a big little powwow on Google Hangouts and uh, what I would like to do is I want to see if there's a way that I can just uh, sort of like link that for you guys to check it out but if you're following me on Facebook or Twitter I did po uh, post that so go check it out uh, you can kind of find the inside baseball of like how the project started uh, especially if you're interested in the writing side and the editorial side that side I don't think is talked enough uh, with comics most people are into the fun like art you know like you can see me do this so you know comics right like it's art that sort of thing but there's the other side of it that's very important if you want to turn this into a business or a job there's a whole other world out there that um, is actually very very important and it would behoove you to actually spend time and find out a little bit about it you know just start dipping your feet in there figuring out how editors work how working with writers work if you're very new to the field it's very important to know that information so that when it does come uh, questions that might just come up where you might feel like you're getting sideswiped or you just don't understand everything besides just drawing really cool artwork uh, I would start to try to focus in a little bit on that. Like, just sprinkle it in. Sprinkle it in as you're doing sort of stuff, okay? Because uh, comics is not usually just about one person, okay? It's usually about multiple people if you're working in that sort of field, especially if you're trying to work with publishers and things. It's not just about you. Um, but check that out. Go check that out. That video was actually really... Uh, it was a good time. I had a really good time. So that's what this is for here. We're going to be doing two. Um, I don't know how much we'll hammer out. Galactus for sure. Two people, um, one of the rewards that they uh, wanted was for me to draw uh, an 8.5 by 11 bust shot. And uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. One of the people, one of my most favorite villains that I love, all, like if I could draw as much Galactus as possible, I would love to. There's something cool about the helmet, the power. I, just, I like powerful villains, you know, like people that not just muscles, but like power you know like there's something about that that's uh, very intriguing to me and I enjoy that so we're gonna do this uh, the other character I'm not too familiar with so if you guys are actually reading the comic please let me know I did just do a quick Google image search uh, hello hello again everybody in the chat uh, Fabian Gray from the comic book five ghosts I read the premise the premise sounds actually really cool uh, but I don't I don't read as much image comics as I think I should I don't read enough comics as I think I should so let's just be let's be honest with that. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Now I just want to hijack it just to do the plugging part because this part here 
kind of goes into, uh, if you guys especially have been following me on Twitter, uh, I've been posting update shots of the Ninja Turtle picture that went all the way through. I won't show you guys here. I'm just going to show you uh, an eBay link. But just a rundown of how this works. Uh, I call it the Freddy method. A lot of people are picking up on that, which is great. If you guys haven't, check out... Oh, how's it going, Josh? Um, check out the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawn Comics. I talk about it all the time. I think it's an amazing, amazing book. Uh, and now I'm sort of just getting comfortable and just letting <laughs> this this here, right here, let me just show you. This is one thing, the, I don't say the book doesn't show you, but when you're doing your line art, I like to, you know, let's get some here. You see how it's going thick to thin, thick to thin? That's cool. It's got energy. There's life in there. And I really dig that. And I think a lot of people really love that. And it's kind of fast, you know? Uh, but what the book teaches you is a more, I don't want to say safe, but it's a, it's a methodical process to keep things moving. That's the idea. It's a keep it moving. It's not like getting stuck in certain spots, at least for me. So there's like a deadline that gets thrown in everything. You guys have heard me talk about it. We're definitely going to be doing it today, so you're going to see the process in action. Um, but I wanted to try one thing that would be really cool. I thought it would be uh, really awesome to try this. Uh, if you guys head on over to Facebook, there's... Um, a comic book group on there you guys can join. I believe it's, uh, I always get the name wrong, Digital digital Comic Book Group or something like that. Uh, I usually just type digital and it'll come up like that. It's a pretty small group, under 100. Um, but there was a challenge going on for uh, Ninja Turtles, which was Raphael versus Krang. And I figured this would be a perfect time to f do this workflow and see how it works out. Uh, it's not a competition, it's just a con, or sorry, it's not a contest or, or a competition, it's a challenge, you know, just, just something to do. I haven't done something like that in a long time, so I figured I would try it out. So I did this whole method and I got the printer that I bought over Christmas. And if you guys are interested, I can get a link and show you guys that as well. Uh, and tried it out, printed it out. And one thing I noticed is if I change the printing settings correctly, the line art that printed out was, it looked very similar. I mean, very similar to an ink line that I would normally do with like a micron or a Stedler kind of lead. And from there, I just went, okay, let's get our pens. I don't have brushes. I have a brush pen, but that's about it. I don't have any quills, nothing fancy. Let's just do it. And there's um, the piece is done. There's some things I don't like about it, but it's, it's a learning curve, right? This is a whole new thing. So that got printed out, got finished, posted. A lot of you guys gave me some solid feedback on it, and that was that was really great. So what the one plug I just wanted to do is uh, let me just pull it up here. For those of you that are interested, I'm not sure anybody in the chat is interested for this, uh, but people on uh, YouTube might be. Uh, I just posted it right before the stream just to get it going. So I posted it here on um, eBay for those of you that are interested. Go over to my Facebook or my Twitter. You can get the link there, or if you want, I can send it to you in here. Again, if you're interested, you can go here. And uh, Again, this is all new stuff for me. thought I'd give it a shot, see if we can sell some original art. I haven't done original art in a very long time to try to sell it and stuff like that. So check that out. And uh, the very last thing we'll do here before we get into some drawing is this week, I also updated my Patreon. So I want to say thank you to everybody that could be in here. Uh, that is a patron. Thank you so much. Everything you guys are doing is helping all of this. This number just keeps growing here, and I couldn't be more ecstatic or grateful. Uh, and I want to make a more positive push towards getting more content for you guys. So I'm not going to spill, you know, read all this stuff for you. You guys can check it out. Uh, Patreon.com slash Jonathan Rector. You guys can find out more stuff here. Uh, I included some more pictures just to jazz it up because a lot of people, they have like some, some fun stuff going on here so you can see what's going on. But uh, I added a whole bunch of different uh, things on here just so you guys might be interested uh, in certain things here okay so again a dollar any pledge amount gets you if you're interested manga studio 5 usually the pencils or the c -Tech pen that I like to use uh, that always comes with any donation that you guys give uh, these are the ones I added here where you can kind of see I added some like limits and stuff to it uh, so for 15 bucks a month you can get a digital sketch if you guys saw the Superman picture that I sent you guys can get one of those that's every month that you continue your subscription. Uh, 30 bucks gets you the uh, video hangout with you and I for an hour, talk about whatever we would, whatever you would like. Uh, the 40 bucks is gonna get you kind of what we're doing today. The eight and a half by 11 on Bristol bust shot or usually just a character shot on Bristol, get mailed it out to you. And then uh, this one down here, so the people that are like the, the big old 11 by 17 Bristol character drawings at the bottom there. So you guys should check that out. Thank you for uh, doing so. And uh, we can get into some Galactus action if you guys would like. Uh, on which uh, which link you t uh, looking for, bud? And sorry if you can hear me uh, just gargling back water here. It's very hot, and uh, the air conditioning that I have in here just doesn't get pushed. <laughs> 
at all. Oh, you guys want that? Sure. Just give me one quick second here. I'll, I'll hook you guys up. So what we're doing now is I'm just going to do one more. I don't like to spend too, too much time on like commissions like this. Uh, commissions are, are very intimate, you know. They're for, for a person, specifically. And for that reason, they if, it, if this way I look at commissions. If somebody comes to you that wants you to draw like Spider-Man, let's say, uh, they just like your art, right? So that's where I sort of just let my instinct take over. I'm not trying to... Uh, necessarily, and this could be wrong, <laughs> but I don't necessarily like to to think too much about the story that I'm going to try to tell with that image. Hopefully, the art is what I get to just put on showcase here and go from there. Uh, oh, looks like unbeat me to it. Thank you, bud. So you guys check that out. I really do appreciate that. So since we're going to let the art just sort of go wild, I'm not going to think of it. I don't want to do too many thumbnails it just it it waters it down to the point where now I'm starting to think of the the nuts and bolts the, in, the in nitty-gritty the, the specifics of the image I just want the image to sort of sell um, and one other thing that I will say for those of you that potentially might be going to con comic book conventions the few that I've been to when people do want uh, what's it called actual art done at the show you've got to be able to churn this stuff out so you got to just kind of let the reins go a little bit and it's a good habit to get going through all of that okay so the two that I came up with was uh, again I call this a classic shot this is a shot I do all the time of a bus with a character with their arm up this one I have him kind of like eating planets so he's got a big cheek and he's just sort of you know you got little like planet debris coming out and he's kind of got a finger up there with like he's kind of taking chips out with their planets this one I feel like I've seen before I'm not sure where I, I know I'm not coming up with this stuff um, and it might just be a little I don't know if I want to go that far it might be a little bit too much um, too much comedy in there. Again, I, I want that power when I think of Galactus. So the classic shot might be what we end up going with. Uh, so let's just sort of waddle through this last one here. So with thinking of power and shape, a lot of it like looking up. I don't want to do, well, maybe I don't want to say I don't want to. Let's try it out here. Let's get a big old massive chest. We're looking up at him. Get this headpiece up here. This headpiece is actually very important because I find a lot of Galactus's power when I when I think about him is it's that headpiece. It's it's massive, you know. It's just it's huge. And there's not very many characters that have mantles like that, you know. It's kind of like a, a lion, like a mane. So I can just kind of push this out. And I got to be conscious too, because this is just like 11 by 7 or 8.5 by 11 piece of Bristol. Uh, so, like printer paper, there's not much room. And, you know, you want to see if it's a bus shot, the lower you go, the more, you know, cool things you can add, like arms and stuff. So, maybe just keeping the shoulders in like this, get like that nice triangle shape in there. And, uh, like you can see with the other ones, there's not much detail, it's just the shape and then go on from there. Uh, I like to just make a second layer and just grab a mid-tone color just to make a silhouette like this so that when you zoom out, you know, like when you zoom out, you can see your image right away. A lot of it pops. You can just kind of look at it and go, ah, okay, I, I like what's what's going on here. You can you know see some, what's the interesting shapes, you know, like what feels nice as well. Uh, Personally, the last one I drew, I know as much as I didn't want that one, it, it feels nice. There's a there's a rhythm to it that I like. Uh, I do like having the arm up there. It does give it that power. And again, the eating planets, I don't know if it's too tongue-in-cheek, if it's... It's cool, but I, I don't know if it's just like too much of an inside joke. Uh, what are you guys asking there? Uh, yeah, it was just a, a group here. Let me actually link you guys to that Facebook group. If you guys are digital artists especially, you guys can check it out. People are posting good stuff in there all the time. Uh, for those of you that are uh, watching on Facebook, it's called Digital Comic Book Arts. That's what it's called. Uh, so you can check that out on Facebook. I believe it, yeah, it is a closed group. So if you guys ask to invite or whatever, like anybody that's on there can just approve it. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay, Blueberry is saying, 
Uh, Galactus uses his ship to turn planets and energy, and he consumes energy. Or that was a comic. Mo- no, you're you're right. I I mean, yeah, I don't know about the new days, but I remember the old stuff. You'd always see Galactus come down with his big like Kirby machines, and they would just be sucking the energy out of there. And then he would he uses that it sucks it dry, crumbles away kind of thing as he like absorbs that energy. The eating part is again that's that tongue in cheek. He's eating planets, right? Like that's the that's there's a little bit of fun to it. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I think I'm, I'm hesitant to go to the classic one, but I like that arm in there uh, for speed. Maybe we just go with the, the last one we just drew. Let me just try something here. I'm going to just merge these layers down. I'm just going to flip this. Sometimes just flipping something. Uh, where is this guy? Sometimes just flipping it gives it like a little bit of a different feel. Rotate it. See, I'm kind of stuck here. Sorry, guys. Even though I said you, you want to be quick with this stuff. You know what? I think I'm going to go with the, the first one I did, which is very rare. Very rare do we go with the first one. Uh, actually, I kind of like it flipped the other way. It breaks a little bit of the rhythm with the fist is the last thing you see. You know, like top left, go right to the eyes is the first thing you get to see. And then there's this massive fist. It uh, talks a little bit about that power we were just sort of talking about. All right, so let's save this up here. We'll save. And again, uh, I'll just keep talking about the Freddy method till we sink it in. Uh, it's got me very, I'm very much knees deep in the workflow of every stage is a brand new file that you save, uh, that you can always go back and, and change things. It's just a, it's a habit that I'm getting in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do, uh, so we've got roughs. I'm going to call it pencils, which you're going to see we're in, we won't really be doing, well, maybe we will. We'll see. All right. So this one. We're just going to kill everything else around it. Just zoom out. Our document's already 8.5 by 11. So we're just going to blow up the thumbnail we had. Looks good. And let's lower our opacity here. Or actually, I want to try something. Let's see if we turn it all to blue. Cool. All right. Let's make a couple folders. This one we're going to call rough. And this one we'll call pencils. Kill that. We don't need that. All right. Now we can get the actual some some pencil time. Let's see how big this pencil is. We'll go a little bigger. All right, let's get our kneadable eraser out. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm just going to open up uh, my reference here for Galactus. Uh, I don't know. I know there's like the classic look that I like. Uh, I've seen the ultimate version of Galactus. I don't know. I <laughs> Kirby did such a good job with a lot of these characters that it's so hard to... You know, I find a lot of artists nowadays, uh, in my opinion, they change things to make it flow better but Kirby has this really weird weird style where I there's very few artists that I've seen that add lines and, and shapes that like Galactus's helmet is a good example of I was like where do you come up with that where that's not something I sit down and go you know what this character needs a gigantic helmet with these really weird uh greater than and less than signs on the side of it it, it just feels so weird and it's such a a raw thing to it that's uh, it's beautiful and it really bothers me when people kind of come around and they start streamlining it and making it functional you know what I mean like there, there's something about these designs that they function in their dysfunction if that makes sense I use what's that called where you, you use the same word to counter your argument so let's get this going here so I like to start off with the chest chest is a very big powerful piece and I'm trying to bend a lot of this up here. And we're using the rough sketch that we had underneath as a guide. Never stick with this stuff as, as, as it, like it is the god of the image. Like you have to always abide by the previous step. 
Uh, I believe anyway that each step feeds into the next step, meaning nothing is final until you say it is. Um, and what this will do is if you can sort of, I don't say train, but think of it like that, it'll always let you be able to come back at any stage and add change. You never feel like you're, how do I manipulate adding anatomy to this scribble when the scribble doesn't make much sense? Right, we're just going to flip it here, just get a different vibe. So I'm really going to just push his chest back. I'm worrying about planes here. See how we kind of like stuck his, added just this, this flat plane underneath of his pecs. And what that's going to let us do is give us, immediately it'll help us get underneath of him, like we're looking under him. I'm just going to start constructing some of the ribs here. And as you can see, this is like a, I've been trying to, I don't say study a lot, but I need to study more. Uh, if you guys look at Capcom artists, I'm a big fan. Uh, especially like Street Fighter is a big one. Uh, there's an artist named Bengus, B-E-N-G-U-S. That's a name he goes by. Or Gouda Cheese, sometimes he goes known as. And uh, a lot of these guys, they'll have this thing where they just, the ribs start here and then, boom, everything gets sucked right in for the abs. And it gives us this really cool, like, massive chest. Okay? And it just helps that power, you know what I mean, and it's like, whenever you look at bodybuilders, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this or not, but like, uh, I remember, uh, I would recommend buying a bodybuilding magazine from time to time, not to do bodybuilding, but to read the articles, because sometimes it's like, you'll read something that they're talking about, and it just, you can bring it back to art, that might sound weird, but I, if you haven't heard, a lot of concept artists, uh, the really good ones anyway, they always recommend reading books, uh, because there's, it builds your visual library. You turn the words into your own vision, right? You let your brain express those things to you. So what people would talk about is like just some certain things I've said a few times where bodybuilders usually say, at least the ones I read, that you can never have big enough shoulders. And that's that's great information because personally, whenever I draw characters, I like to have the massive shoulders. Um, and they'll always say things like the V shape or the, the V taper and all that sort of thing, right? So if you were to have, I don't know, a hero, we'll put a head here. And we'll put the massive shoulders, you know, and you got your, your torso going into your your, uh, your hips and your legs, you know. Even maybe we'll shoot those shoulders out even more like that. Let me just zoom in here. Like that looks fine, right? Again, this could be a style thing. But if you were to take that exact same thing, I'm just going to show you an example here, okay? And this is building your visual library, what I'd like to talk about. Oops. Shift. There we go. Now watch this. Again, this could be just a style thing. But when you suck that chest in like that, don't go too, I don't want to say too stupid with it. Like you don't want to make it look like he's, they're anorexic. But immediately one tends to have a feeling of more uh, agile, more power to it. And that's basically just because of shape. It's like your eye is led down. Your eye is more attracted to uh, a shape that's a triangle as opposed to maybe a more natural sort of feeling that's, uh, what is this? I forget the name of this shape. You know what I mean? There's something just, your eye finds this more interesting than, you know, like a, a safer boxy shape. The thing is too, right? But like, like a lot of characters blocks work for them, right? Like if I'm drawing Juggernaut from Marvel Comics, most likely don't want to be sucking in his chest. The Hulk, most likely don't want to be sucking in his chest, right? You want those big shapes, but it's it's good to have that sort of uh, thing in your, in your arsenal when you're developing, you know, if you're like me and you like really muscular characters or just beefy guys that uh, help sell that superhero look. And again, you know, everybody's vision of a superhero is different. So your vision doesn't necessarily reflect what mine is when I talk about superheroes, especially male superheroes. All 
All right, so we're going to have this here. What I might do is actually bring that chest up even more. I'm going to just let it go past you a little bit. In this stage here, you just want to worry about getting enough information so that we can get some some line art down pretty quick. And we're going to curve this anatomy. Always curving, always curving. Especially when something's going away from us or coming towards us. It helps sell that uh, illusion of depth. Right? Gonna curve this in here and the rest of his abs can come out like that and we can just tuck that r the rib cage in there like that it's a very cartoony kind of feel of it it's not realistic <laughs> it might look realistic and if it does then then we're in business right uh, Jim Lee likes to do, I know you guys are talking about Jim Lee, uh, some cats like to do this. They'll add like right up here, there's like two muscles they add up here. I don't really know what muscles those are. It can look pretty cool. So if we just zoom out here so we can kind of see the, the torso shape we're going with. Might look a little funky. Let's give that a little save. Okay. And actually, let's see if we can. Uh, let's go see something here. Okay. I'm just going to open up the Ninja Turtle one just so you guys can see really quickly in case we don't get to it tonight. Just the stages we're going to go through here, okay? And I probably should have did this one first. All right, so this would have been the thumbnail level that we started with, which you see that we're doing right now, okay? And all it was was I did, I think, four. You can go again on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. You can check this out. So this is the one I liked. We talked about it last week, but those on YouTube might not have. Well, you guys will never see that episode. So what we did was I chose this one because a lot of the other ones, they were sort of like the safe shots. Uh, the shot that I'm doing right now, Galactus, I would call that a safe shot. Uh, there's nothing really pushing the limits or the, the boundaries or I don't want to say just something you might like if you you might not see that shot a lot is something that I like to call not safe. You're pushing boundaries um, and not safe to to you might just mean something like changing the head angle, something that's you're not comfortable with um, just to see how far you can kind of kind of get with your art. So we blew up the thumbnail. Uh, then we went right into the roughs. Actually, let's turn that off so you can see. And this would have been the pencils, what we're doing now, so you can see how far we're going to really go with this. Uh, as you can tell, there's some areas here I added red. I like to just change in some colors if we're going to add some costume elements, especially in superhero books, or just in generally general, the way I like to draw is I like to have the anatomy down for the most part and then put the clothing over top. Uh, so you can see we got all of what we need here. This is just the energy, what we need, you know, just what we need and then from here we're gonna go ahead we're gonna turn that blue and turn off our thumbnail layer and let's just turn uh, turn the pencils down a little bit so this is what all we're gonna be doing so this would have been like if you imagine a micron and those of you that don't have microns a, a Bic pen a regular pen that you've always had ever okay it's got like that dull kinda line that's it you just go through here and the idea here is to just you're picking the information that you are gonna need to carry on to the next stage you're not worrying about if lines are connected, like let's go in here. Look at all look like look how messy a lot of these lines are. Okay, they're like right in here and lines aren't even connecting. Uh what you need is there. That's all that matters. Okay? It's to always again to push you into the next stage. It's not to each stage is final, then you move to the next. Finish that stage, move to the next, you know? Uh so anyway, so we got that. And then the the last layer, let me just turn that off is the contour line. Now this one is just imagine the exact same kind of pen like a micron. Uh, I, th I feel like most people, I just say micron because I feel most people that's what they're used to. That's like probably the first tools they kind of get into. Um, anyway, so what you do is you just start to pick out the areas that you need to pop over each other to to select it. You know, so Raphael here, uh, you can see I just went around all of him just to make him pop out over Krang. That's it. So this is all we're going to do. And from this is where we print. And then we're going to go ahead and get uh, all of our 
inking lines if you want to look uh, once we print it out okay so I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of, of the, the workflow that we're gonna be doing here so you can kinda of see how this goes alright so we're gonna have the chest here I'm gonna make another layer for the arm because I want to see how much I can I can fit in here we'll figure out where its head's gonna go and stuff because I don't want to take up too much of the chest but I want a pretty kick-ass fist if we can get one so I'm just kind of figuring out the shape of it go to the wrist and we can just get disgusting anatomy going here let's just flip it a lot of this stuff just needs to be sort of coaxed into where it needs to go <laughs> a lot of it's just gonna kinda get twisted and built onto the stage before it again because Galactus isn't ripped at all I'm making him pretty hulked out like his anatomy is pretty hulky right here uh, but thankfully he has a lot of really cool design to him so a lot of that anatomy is going to get covered up here so let's just start carving out what the fist is going to look like ideas of where knuckles will go and I should say too if you guys have any comments or questions or needed help with anything by all means please toss them in the chat and I'll definitely uh, help you out we will do a critique session tonight too in about 15 minutes I'll pick one or two for the last uh, 15 minutes of the show and I uh, will go ahead and knock out some critique so you guys if you had anything that you guys would like me to see and give a little like uh, idea for or anything like that by all means get that ready and uh, we can Get that going again this week, too. Alright, so we just get some roundness here to the fingers. here. Alright, see if we can figure out the anatomy here. So we got an elbow. Wrist bone's in here somewhere. And I'm just going to curve this in here. This is sort of like that line that connects the sort of like it's, I call it like the dividing line. Like if you look at a forearm, let's do a cylinder. And we'll do the hand like this with the fingers. <laughs> so there's like a, your uh, wrist bone here usually does a straight line to your elbow and I like to remind myself because like with that bone there you got all these muscles on the top of it and then you got the muscles at the bottom of it but there's usually that line there so if you ever see like people mowing their lawn or if you're working out lifting weights and stuff if you're like doing curls or even just look in the mirror everybody's got it and just sort of like twist your 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 wrist there so you can see that cut you can feel it too where your bone is and you'll see where the shadow kind of goes in there and just a, a nice little reminder for yourself I, for me anyway too of uh, where if I can get that in there then I can figure out how much muscle I want to throw around in there without it necessarily feeling too too gross that there too. I don't think we need that. So I'm going to ask a question here for the people in the chat too. Uh, what content would you guys like to see more on the YouTube show? Lately, if I look back, it's all been just uploading my YouTube stuff. Uh, and please, in the comments too, if you're watching this on YouTube and you made it this far, uh, le let me know. I'm thinking kind of going back myself like I know a lot of people like tutorials and things uh, they're not very fun to do <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of pressure because a lot of people are coming to you asking for how do you do something proper 
And, uh, you know, you, you might, I might have the answer or other people might have the answer, but uh, there's nothing really fun about that. I might get back into just doing, like, uh, we sort of did the let's draw Wolverine, let's do, like, actual characters and stuff. Um, and I think some people get a kick out of seeing, like, the process of that with a character. Because um, it feels to me like a lot of people like fan art. And you can kind of combine a lot of workflow with that. Uh, Lars is saying three-page mini-comic. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done anything mini-comic related, eh? Especially three pages. I think I don't have the, the stones to do a three-pager as much as I... I t Actually, you know what? The, we are going to be doing something. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to release it. Uh, I am going to record it, uh, but I'll, I'll figure out when I'm going to release it, but... Uh, I am going to be working on the Ninja Turtle thing in the background, just so you guys know. I have been working on it, and I have been doing a little bit of recording on it. Um, and it's, I think it's three to, might be just three to five pages. You know, it is a pitch kind of idea. Uh, but it might just be just that, three pages. Uh, the mini comic part, it, it still follows the, the same workflow for that. Uh, so it'll still hit, as the Trailer Park Boys would say, it's two birds stone at once. Uh, it'll get the th uh, three-page mini comic done, and it'll show you sort of like how to combine a pitch sort of idea like that, like what uh, I would technically put in a portfolio kind of thing. Uh, Don's asking, speaking of what's going on, with Castle Dracula. Castle Dracula is still moving forward. Actually, damn. Okay, so I haven't talked to. I've talked last week since the stream. I've had three I, like amazing conversations with friends about just. The business in general, um, I, I feel like I, I don't want to say I've been looking at comics as a business wrong or anything like that, but I hope you guys get a chance to experience this. If you guys have friends that you can talk to about comics as a business, you know, like people that want to do this as their job, and, and maybe you guys are in the chat and, and this, this is exactly what it is that you're looking for. Uh, but I had this conversation with a buddy of mine. And you guys can agree or disagree. That's fine. I personally agree. Uh, and we, we sort of whittled it down. If I could, th if I'm trying to think of a, a clean way of saying this, we had like an hour discussion about it. But I have to use myself as a test case where a lot of the artists that I follow that aren't working at Marvel and the big places and stuff, um, I like to just see their like their comics. I want to buy their work. I'm not necessarily buying it because it's the the best written the plots are like holy when i put that down it changed my life i had an emotion no, nothing like that i just enjoy it so much that i i love looking at their art and i love looking at the story and the things they are creating and things like this and with saying that i've been personally working on castle dracula and i've what i'm stuck at is these plots they're they're good but i know they can be better i just i'm just trying to find you know like if you're writing the writing is the process, right, of how can I put these little things here and there to make it the payoff just, oh, man, like, right? And what's happening is I'm getting caught up in not what I want to get out of it, which is, I w like, if I have editors or you guys or anybody else that's coming to my website and looking at stuff, I want you to guys to see comic pages. I don't want to just show pinups all the time because I want to do comic pages, and I do comic pages, but you guys don't see the ones that I'm posting because they're either not working or things like that. So after this long-winded conversation, it was basically how I look at it. If you think of comics as a business, you're either, and you may have heard this, you're either consuming or you're creating. It's hard to have a mix of the two. Usually, if you really are honest with yourself, you're doing one more than the other. Okay, and I feel like I'm in the consuming part because I'm I'm trying to read books on like how to write better and all, which is fine. There's got to be a, you know like a you know again I talk about eighty twenty rule. You know, eighty percent of my time should be drawing comic books. Twenty percent should be learning how to get better or writing comic books. Same kind of thing, right? Create zooming, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> that's a really great way of saying it. So the way I'm just looking at it is like you know what? Uh, that's it. I'm I'm getting way too into my head of this. Castle Dracula isn't meant to be. Uh, I make it and I walk away. It's supposed to be a fun project, so let's keep it fun. Let's go back to the roots. What is it? What is it? What is it? The fundamental thing that makes it it. And 
since I've made that, rev I, say, I guess, revelation of just you stick to that and just draw. Just draw the, the 30 or 28, 32 pages uh, comic there. And that's it. Once it's done, you get to move on and, you know, keep going. And, and I think people... On, and I'm talking about you guys as well because I I find myself I'm like this again is like I'm assuming you guys just want comic book stuff from me you guys want art, my art and things right just like when I go to artists I want just their art give me your art I don't I don't care about the entire package all the time I just want more I want it's sort of like binge watching binge watching like Netflix Orange is the New Black if you guys aren't watching it give it a shot I think it's amazing a new season comes out like once a year and boom a week and it's gone. You just eat that up. You binge watch things, and I feel like that's the kind of culture that's around now. And comics aren't any different. The only difference for us is like we have to read one title a month. So that's why most people they get like 50 comics a month or 10 or five, whatever you can get. You know, you all you want to keep, you want more and more and more. So if that's the case, just make more and more and more and more. I, I feel like it's sort of um, that. At what point do you stop? creating art and I'm putting it in parentheses here that you can't see like the art meaning at what point does the art not matter anymore and you just need to create stuff and I think that's actually very important it's very it needs to be more important myself okay so I, again that's a long-winded way I just wanted to include the conversation that I had with a, a buddy with you guys about that because it, it's it changed a lot of what I was looking at a lot of my problems were just like you know what I don't want to be a writer. I just want to be a storyteller. And as long as I can tell stories, I, I'm happy. I'm a happy guy if I can create, again, even this, right? Like, I want whoever wanted to spend money for a commission, that's that's massive, man. People are willing to give you money they work for for something. I want them to have this, post it on their wall, maybe forget about it. But when they look at it again, they go, you know, like, that's for me. That's That was done for me. I want them to have that feeling of it. And I want them, obviously, to like it as well. But I, I, that's the thing, right? It sort of goes into this, this big idea of I just want to share as much as I can with the people that are interested in what you're doing. And by worrying about if it's the best that you can currently do, just don't. You know, don't get in your head. Stop, stop doing what I'm doing and getting locked up in the whole... It's... I don't know. <laughs> it's not necessarily the sum of its parts. It's just it. I, I feel like, and I'm this again. I I'm going in circles with this, but I'm the. I know I'm the same way. If I could, if I could get Joe Matarera art all the time, just give it. Just give me art, man. I you know I just want. I want the stuff that I like, and I want it a lot. You know I want. I want more of just that. I want new experiences like that, like as much as I possibly can. So that's all. That's all. I w <laughs> yeah, it did get a little deep there. It did get a little deep. Thank Cass. I really do appreciate that. Uh, let me just go up because I noticed some people were saying some stuff and I, I, you know, you know how we ramble guys. You know how we go. All right. What do we got? Some Rick Astley in the chat. Awesome. So he's going to shows up. Uh, Cass is saying, I personally love your, oh, this is when I was asking for videos. Um, I personally love your tutorials, Jonathan, but seeing you draw a character is awesome. Well, thank you. Um, Donald saying, and that spinoff with the Night Lady. Oh, okay, so that one will be really quick. I don't want to go into it too much because uh, if you guys want, I'm going to scroll down and just catch up. Please post a link in uh, the chat with something that you'd like me to critique if anybody has any by all means we'll do that don't be shy uh, like I've said before if you've got a problem with something there's a bajillion chance that somebody else is struggling with the same sort of thing whether they're here tonight or they're watching in the future on YouTube be the brave one post something and hopefully I can help you guys out with uh, my view and opinion on it I really do appreciate that uh, and please also don't just include the link include what you're looking to get help with if the anatomy's off or storytelling that sort of thing okay uh, okay, so the spinoff with the, the lady, uh, that was um, from uh, a little side story called Black Tower within the Castle Dracula universe. Uh, I still want to incorporate that in some way, but I'm, going, I'm stripping away everything. I'm going right to the root of it, and so, uh, at least for right now, she has nothing to do with it. Uh, even that secondary character I made, uh, the guy with the knives, he's out. It's just the main character. Um, in Dracula for the most part again I I, I, I want to just make this stuff and I, when you read the title there's there's so much more that I had in there where it was even getting up to a trilogy <laughs> it was getting out of hand 
So I might be breaking hearts, might be doing things, but it's just a streamlined way. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it's going. So far, every, I'm telling you right now, so far, everything has been going at a, at a rapid pace compared to what it was doing before. Again, because I was getting locked up on making the script great when I just want to... S share stuff right so if i just want to share art and an experience i don't want to share lord of the rings i'm i know i'm not ready for that so trying to get into that is is very silly and as long as i've realized that now it's it's good it's a good thing anyway okay uh Donald saying uh, which is uh, beautiful just make the comics you want to read and people with similar tastes uh, that like it will read it too uh, welcome, Newt Perfect. Lars has got money problems. <laughs> okay, so let me just uh, save this up here. So we got our first critique. So uh, I was hoping to get a lot further than this. I feel like that happens all the time during these streams. Uh, but that's why I did want to show you guys the Ninja Turtle workflow, just because that's where this will end up going. So if you guys want to see this completed, by all means, please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll be making updates as this goes, like usual. Uh, the final inks won't be done digital. They're going to be done traditional. That felt really weird. Uh, next week, we should be working on comic book stuff. If I play my cards right, uh, we should be doing Ninja Turtle pages. Nah, it'll be exciting as F. Exciting as F. And I'm not sure if I just want to do the pencils like this, if I want to submit pencils or digital. I'm kind of torn on that. I don't know if... Uh, I Personally, if I were to get hired by Marvel DC, there's something... Uh, again, I talked about workflow. There's something really great about having inks done in that stage that I showed you. Uh, but with pencils, that also would let me make a better book because there'd be people that are spending as much time as I have trying to get my art good and my pencils good, they've been doing inking and they would just take it to the next level. Anybody that's following Greg Capullo on Twitter, the artist of Batman, uh, he was an artist on Spawn, Haunt, check his stuff out, amazing if you haven't seen it. He is very loose with his pencils, but he's got two amazing inkers on him on the creative team that help bring the entire art together. And if you can get that kind of level of deliciousness, you see what I'm saying there? It's like, why would I try to compete with the inks when somebody like that could bring their mastery onto it? All I need is bring my mastery of storytelling, um, whatever stage that might be, and pencils, and they can breathe that, that book to life. We can all kind of like participate in the heartbeat of that book. That's that's the beautiful stuff. That's the, that's the, the juice. Okay, so we got that saved there. Let me just turn all this off here so we can jump into the first critique tonight. Uh, from Millennium Man 001. Let's let it load up here, guys. Oh, and please let me know if uh, the stream's lagging or anything like that. Uh, only because I've got a new wireless setup going here, and wireless always scares the hell out of me. I prefer <laughs> wired because the internet dies all the time here. All right, so we've actually got something very unique here. I'm not quite sure what I'll be able to give feedback-wise on this. Uh, there's a couple things coming to mind right away. Oh, first, it's very well drawn. Uh, let me just see what you were saying there, Millennium. This isn't a superhero, but this is part of a series of commissions that I'm doing on insects, trying to go with a bit of photorealism. His image was done for a uh, picture. And I just want to make sure you didn't f have anything else. Okay, so I'm just going to go really quick with this one because obviously, uh, compared to what I was just doing before, this is a radically different style. The only thing I could suggest is to make it more dynamic, obviously, right? Check out, there's a, a fabulous artist on YouTube named Fang Zhu. I'll just write that up here. And if you guys aren't uh, subscribed to him, Fang Zhu. If you guys are not subscribed to him on YouTube, you really should. A lot of, he does a lot of concept art. That's what he's mostly known for, but there's so much practical application and concept art and design that I, I feel it behooves you to actually like hey, look at that stuff to become a better comic book artist, just an illustrator in general. Okay, what he would tell you to do in this sort of thing is to introduce 3D to it. I'm gonna go really quickly with this one because I know I'm not going to do very well or give the method a uh, very good explanation. But so the idea would be like you find a perspective here, right? And we're just gonna put a grid. And from this, 
you know, we can get like some straight lines. And right away, this is where it kind of gets wild, right? We can start to figure out sort of what's going on with this uh, praying mantis. You start to feel it a little bit more here. Get the back end. And I'm trying to do like a pretty quick gestures here with a pen. So what you do is you sort of draw one plane and then you go to the next perspective point and you sort of connect it, right? So like we'll worry about this shoulder here, right? Comes down, uh, he's got his praying mantises are so cool. This is a really well done drawing. I saw the colored version on or, uh, that you had on um, DeviantArt as well. So by all means, this is just uh, something I would throw in there to do on your own time uh, because this would take a, you know quite a bit of time to continually do this sort of stuff. So you see you sort of have this plane here. This perspective point that's over here, you know it's there. So you can sort of like eyeball it in by putting some, some guides in. And what this does is it it just makes it feel more solid. And this is really what you do with um, vehicle work as well, right? This is why I suggest checking out concept artists, uh, especially, uh, what do they call this? Hard surface, hard surface design. We get this here because this one comes out at a, a different angle. This comes up to the side here. I just want to try this here. Um, but this sort of stuff teaches you really like a lot of design choice um, and especially when you're worrying about cars and things and I'm not a, a, a terrific car artist by any means but uh, working like this helped me see see things just a little differently right so again all we're doing is we're we're, we're seeing the shape here right so if I could just put this perspective on there so you can kind of see what's going on we're just trying to figure out like it's easy to figure out a plane on this side and then you go just you know put these little lines over to the next perspective and you can you can figure out where, where everything's gonna gonna go there okay and and the last touch up you would really do here if you really wanted to uh, I don't know what we got here for for this is this gonna work yeah you would just use that same perspective you've already had to put like the shadow underneath, right? And just like if you can tell, it's just a rectangle shape here, but it immediately just g makes it feel like it's a little bit more there, like it's got a little bit more weight. Um, again, the what you did is beautiful. I wouldn't change it. It just has that feeling of um, like in a textbook, like in a science textbook, which is if that's the case, keep rocking it. It looks beautiful. Okay, so hopefully I was able to help you out there. Um, let's see if we can get another one in here tonight. Uh, okay, so Lars, my last critique, you pointed out my coloring and having more contrast. So that's what I've tried here. Right, let's check it out here. And uh, thank you guys that keep sharing new things or critique. And uh, for those of you that are actually continually sharing stuff and you're at, and you're actually applying some of the stuff I'm saying because it makes sense to you that's that's awesome uh, I want to kind of like clap for you here because there's a lot of people that take critique the wrong way they think people are attacking them um, and you know a lot of things people say it's up to you to make that decision if that's right for you like if you think what they're saying is true or not okay and if you are if you're able to able to find some 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 sugar in the salt people are throwing at you. It's going to make you a better artist because it, it I don't want to say desensitizes you, but it breaks that mold out of your head that everything you create is good and it should be appreciated because that's not true. That's not true. Okay. And the more you work, the more you find out that it's, there, there's more to it than just, Oh, look what I did. Now where's my acceptance from it? Okay. So, uh, I just want to look at this right away and I right away. Amazing. That looks absolutely beautiful. There's not much here I could critique. There's some anatomy issues. If if I'm if I'm going to be just critiquing to critique here, uh, let's just grab this guy here. Let's go to a red, so we can see if it'll pop there. Yeah. So like this hand, there's some issues there. Uh, you know, like this finger could be a little higher. Uh, there's an issue here. Let me just zoom in here. A lot of people do this. I do it sometimes myself right here, where this hand, if you look at it, it kind of looks like, uh, if you've ever watched Beetlejuice, 
You know those like sandworms that come out like this? They got the little eye. It looks like that because there's no the, the finger is so big, right? Like there's no uh, separation from finger. It just goes right into that the fatty part of the finger in there. Um, so there's like the knuckles too far back sort of thing. You could there's ways to work around it. Um, oh, the ears could use some work, but this is nitpicky stuff to be honest with you. Uh, what what's here is, is great. Uh, let's just be a little critical of the lighting and see kind of where that goes. So we know the lighting is coming from from where? It looks like it's so the lighting actually might be a little off. It looks like it's obviously coming from the left but you've got shadowing down here which means the lighting's up here but this guy is heavily shaded so that kind of means the lighting is like this lighting for this guy is like right here behind him. So it looks like you've got two light sources going on. This guy in the back is, is lit incorrectly, personally. Um, but at first glance, I don't think you'd notice that. It makes the guy with the ball pop, which is good. But uh, yeah, wonderful job. If, if anything, if you had room, possibly uh, put some shading down on the ground. That'll just really sell these guys in this in this space. And this is actually a, a really good test. I, I recommend you guys do this too. When you're drawing characters and you're adding shading, bravo by the way, because I know a lot of people get scared by that, but by adding shadows, add it on the ground. If they're standing on the ground, if they're flying, add that shadow and see what makes sense. Because right away what'll happen is if the light is coming from, oops, that's fine. If the light really is coming from what character one I'm just going to number them here so you guys can see a little better. So character's one light source is coming kind of like this direction, okay? So that means the lighting would follow this path. But if you look at the guy behind us, that he's so like the front like in shadow, backlit that his shadow is almost coming this way. And it's just a really quick test that you can give yourself to see if your lighting is is matching up. But uh wonderful job regardless. Good job. And let's just see if we got anything else here. Uh, so Millennium Man is saying, I used the pick of a mantis and copied the pose right on top of the pick among so you have five another layer. Okay, so it, just, just so I'm clear, if you took a picture of a real mantis and just drew over top of it, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't, I don't suggest people do that. If it's for a deadline um, and you're just getting money, Oh, you know, I'm, nobody's gonna tell anybody not how to make money. Uh, I I would just be leery of that because it tends to. Uh, I don't even necessarily say introduce bad habits, um, because you should be able to draw this stuff on your own. Again, if it's deadline, and I'm talking uh, from somebody that from SketchUp brings in cars into comic panels, and I just draw over cars as well, right? So. There is a little bit of give and take there. I don't want to be too critical or, or I don't want to say chastise people because I do a level of that as well. Um, just something to be just something to be aware of of being able to draw it on your own too. Okay. Um, okay, so we can do a really quick one here from Pillowhead, uh, who wants to attack me. Attack him with his shading. All right, I'm not going to bring it in. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's it's from it's a space thing, so I mean, <laughs> depending on the amount of suns that are in there, and I guess planets that are reflecting stuff, shading could go in a lot of ways. Okay. All right. Well, with that, you guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming in tonight. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys got a little bit out of it. I had a, a great time myself. Uh, I wish we could get a little further with the Galactus Commission, but what are you going to do? Like usual, if you guys want, uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and you guys can see how this is going to go once we get the legit inks on there and all that stuff. And hopefully for whoever this is going to, they enjoy it and uh, all that good stuff. And just to wrap up, if you guys want to head on over to patreon.com slash Jonathan Rector, I've added a bunch of new, uh, s uh, su not subscriptions, donation amounts that you guys can uh, pitch in if you like and there's a whole new you know commissions and all kinds of things if you guys are interested in that as well as go to jonathanrector.com 
find all the places I'm online. You can check that out. And uh, if you're interested in buying the uh, the original inks for the Ninja Turtle Raphael versus Krang piece, uh, that is up on eBay right now. I believe it's a seven to ten day, whatever. So if you are interested, check that out. Really appreciate that. And uh, last little update, I guess I'll give you that I didn't give before. For anybody that's following me on my my blog on my site. I've moved it. It's still there right now, but the last post I made has a link. Uh, I've just moved my blog stuff. I'll be blogging everywhere from now on Tumblr. It just seems so much easier to put content up there, and it's easier for people to share. Uh, it's a great service. Everybody uses Tumblr. You know what I mean? Uh, so you guys can follow me over there if you're interested, and uh, I'm trying to post some articles and stuff like that on there as well. So thank you guys. Like usual, really appreciate all the support you guys have given me. Uh, tonight and over the years to be honest with you and uh if you're watching this this show is every wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m eastern standard time so just take a look at your at your watch there or your clock and subtract an hour from it and i'll see you guys next wednesday so until next wednesday keep reading comics keep making comics and i'll talk to you then bye bye <laughs>